Hi, I'm Dylan Evans, and this is a condensed version of a talk I gave at a conference in Tenerife on Friday the 8th of May 2009, entitled Emotional Equations. For more information, please visit www.dylan.org.uk. This is the outline of my talk. I'm going to rattle through these slides pretty quickly, but you can always go back and review them later on, pausing and rewinding whenever you need more time to absorb something. If you only remember one thing from this talk, I hope it is that emotions can be quantified in a precise scientific way by means of equations. One of the greatest scientific achievements of the 20th century was the development of game theory. If you don't know much about game theory, I urge you to do some background reading on the subject. At the very least, check it out on Wikipedia. These pictures are of the two greatest pioneers of game theory, John von Neumann and John Nash. Check them out on Wikipedia too. The life of John Nash was the inspiration for the film A Beautiful Mind, starring Russell Crowe. One of the most well-studied games in game theory is the ultimatum game. In this game, two strangers are paired up and given a sum of money. One of them, let's call her the proposer, has to decide how to divide up the money between the two. She might suggest a 50-50 split, or she might be mean and offer, say, only 10% to the other person. The other player, let's call him the responder, can either accept this offer or reject it. If he accepts it, each player walks away with their share of the money. If he rejects the offer, each player walks away with nothing. Game theory predicts that the proposer should always offer the smallest amount possible. It also predicts that the responder should always accept the proposer's offer, no matter how small it is. After all, some money is always better than none, right? But this isn't what people actually do when they play this game. Instead of offering the smallest possible amount, most proposers offer between 40 and 50% of the money. And on the few occasions that proposers offer less than 30%, responders reject about half of those offers. These findings have been replicated many times in studies all around the world. It's an almost universal pattern. The only odd ones out are people from pre-literate cultures. They are the only people who seem to behave as game theory predicts. Many people have interpreted these findings as showing that people are irrational. The argument seems simple. Game theory tells us how rational people will play the ultimatum game, but people don't play the ultimatum game this way. Therefore, it follows that people do not behave rationally when playing the ultimatum game. But wait a moment. The first premise in that argument is not quite correct. Game theory doesn't tell us how rational people play games. It tells us how rational, self-interested people play games. So, the fact that people don't play the ultimatum game in the way predicted by game theory tells us that people are either not entirely rational or not entirely self-interested, or both. Theorists differ in which of these conclusions they prefer. Those who prefer to retain the self-interest assumption and relax the rationality assumption develop what they call learning models. I won't go into those here, but if you're interested in following up these models, you can check out a paper by Alvin Roth and Ido Erev about learning in extensive form games, published in 1995 in a journal called Games and Economic Behaviour. My focus in the rest of this podcast is on a different family of models called social preference models. These models retain the rationality assumption and relax the self-interest assumption. In other words, social preference models retain the basic assumptions of rational choice theory, namely that people make decisions in a way that tends to maximize their utility. What these models add to the basic theory is the idea that utility is now a function not only of my own personal gain, but also of how much other people gain. In other words, these models propose that people care about other things in addition to their own personal gains and losses, things like fairness and equality. We can express this idea mathematically like this. Social preference models differ from one another in the ways that they specify exactly how my utility depends on the gains and losses of others. One influential social preference model is the inequity aversion model of Ernst Fair and Klaus Schmidt. Inequity aversion means that people resist inequitable outcomes. 
In other words, people are willing to give up some material payoff to shift their group or society in the direction of more equitable outcomes. The theory is expressed in terms of this equation, in which there are two parameters, one for envy and one for guilt. My utility is decreased when others have more than me to the extent that I feel envy. My utility is also decreased when others have less than me to the extent that I feel guilt. Fair and Schmidt found that their equation could explain a lot of the data from ultimatum game experiments if they assumed that values of these two parameters were distributed in roughly this way. For example, if about 30% of people feel no envy and about 10% are very envious. A cynic might argue that the results of ultimatum game experiments will come as a surprise only to economists who have been brainwashed by their professional education into thinking that we are all selfish. But it isn't just economists who hold this view. According to the philosopher Peter Singer, most people in the West, quote, are enthralled to the idea that it is normal to be self-interested, unquote. For example, even when people act altruistically, they offer self-interested explanations. They say, I volunteered because it got me out of the house, not because I wanted to help. Singer's thesis is supported by some very interesting research done by Rebecca Ratner and Dale Miller on what they call the norm of self-interest. The interesting thing about this norm is that it persists despite a lot of contrary evidence. There are many examples from everyday life that people are not entirely self-interested creatures. Here are just a few for you to mull over. If you've got any questions, please email me at d.evans at ucc.ie There's more stuff on my website too.